but for the Jews it had become also a part of their identity as an individual, as a family, as a community, and even in the world. The Sabbath was truly part of their identity. The down religion is that God came to us. He came down to us. Christ came Rules to us. without relationship leads to rebellion. Dear friends in Christ, we gather together about a wonderful story of Jesus uh, in his early ministry interacting uh, with uh, the, the people around him and the, the uh, d disciples. And we also then uh, see the tension starting to build between uh, him and the church leaders of his day, the Pharisees and others. Uh, so, third commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh, pretty clear, in many ways very simple. Uh, and yet challenging in, in other ways as well. But the Sabbath is God's idea. And the way that it's always described is as a Sabbath rest. So rest is a key word uh, in it. And uh, the way God designed us, which sometimes um, uh, we violate, um, is uh, the rhythm of, of life. Just the rhythm, you know, on a daily rhythm of being awake and being asleep. I mean, sometimes it may be challenging to, to sleep or go to sleep, you know, but that can be, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we may abuse that in terms of not getting our sleep or getting our rest. And apparently a lot of uh, that computer screen blue light at, at right before you go to bed keeps you awake or something anyway. But uh, this rhythm, right, of a daily. But it's something to embrace, you know, not fight, but embrace with a bit of discipline. See, see the, the whole idea, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, is still God calls us to be disciplined, but not out of fear, you know, not out of, out of sort of the, the regulations that God would have, but just in terms of, of how God would want us to be our best, give him honor, glory. Ultimately, Sabbath is about loving God and loving neighbor. Actually, most things come down to that in terms of our Christian life. There's rhythm. Well, then he put into another rhythm of our life, and that's the week. We still have seven days. It's interesting because it goes way back to the, uh, to the creation of the, of the world. That in six days, God created the world. The seventh day, he rested. And, and why? He set that as a side, as a time. So every time that we observe Sabbath rest, uh, we are reflecting and remembering God's gift of creation, God's gift of life and it becomes so very much a, 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 a something for us to to enjoy and so when we have those six days of, of work now five I guess some in some settings we're trying to work toward four days three-day weekend I, I hear a little bit here and there um, it's that God's saying give give yourself that Sabbath rest uh, and um, uh, it's it's interesting because for Jesus uh, in his day, the Pharisees had added all these other rules. It wasn't just about the Sabbath, but especially about the Sabbath, that really the Sabbath became kind of a tyrant. <clears throat> it was very demanding. It had a lot of reg regulations. It was very stressful. You could only walk so far. You could only do so much. And you were always worried, were you sinning against God because of this, that, or the other thing? And God's thinking, I didn't, and Je well, Jesus specifically says, wait, that's not what this is all about. Okay, it's, it's not about regulation. Sabbath is about relationship, not regulation. But for the Jews, it had become also a part of their identity as an individual, as a family, as a community, and even in the world. The Sabbath was truly part of their identity and keeping it. And that's important. I mean, I would say that one of the identities of the Christian church is that we worship on Sunday. Now, it's gotten a little bit uh, more loose or less so, and the impact on our culture has changed in terms of growing up where you, stores are closed on Sunday and that sort of a thing. Um, but God had something in mind. It's like, sure, you can make more money, you can get more done working, working seven days a week, but I'll take care of you if you work six. I'll take care of you if you work five. Now, you have to work. That's God's idea too, but that's the rhythm, right? Work and rest, work and rest. And, um, and also for us then, uh, in terms of keeping the Sabbath holy, to have this time set aside. In a lot of ways, the tyrant of our day is the work. Not the Sabbath. It's the work. Whether it is 
imposing uh, uh, incredible expectations on workers, who then often are abused in many ways, uh, and uh, uh, to understand of uh, finding the balance or, or that, that workable wage and all those sorts of things. But when God uh, designed this, uh, he set it up to be about relationships. And even if we go to our verse for today, then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is even Lord of the Sabbath. And so he's really trying to teach them what it is to be a living person in relationship to God and to be free to live, to be free to live, not to be so worried about doing it just so or just right. Um, and uh, uh, so this purpose of the, of, the, of, the, um, of the Sabbath was to celebrate creation, connect us to creation. So a great thing to do today on a Sabbath is go out and enjoy a beautiful day that God has given to you. Walk, bike, hike, whatever you want to do, right? Well, can't go snowshoeing today, but sometimes maybe you could do that, right? Okay, so it's enjoy, appreciate creation. Connect to creation. That's part of the Sabbath. As well as then uh, um, it also to celebrate our redemption, which is a remember of Exodus. Every time that people gather together for the Sabbath, it brought them back to God's creation, gift of the created world and life, sustaining life, but also the redemption, which brings us back to Exodus and being uh, freed from, once again, what? Slavery in Egypt. Jesus on the cross then frees us from slavery to sin and sets us free then to live and have life. And then to gather together, not because we have to, but to gather together to worship and praise God as an opportunity and a, a privilege. I have to understand as Jesus is interacting with the Pharisees that there's only two religions in the world, period. They have different names, but there's only two. One is an up religion, and the other is a down religion. The up religion is doing. This is the Pharisees. And all other religions, world religions, creeps into Christian uh, denominations as well, is what am I doing? So the Pharisees are thinking, okay, it's my effort, my strength, up to God that's going to lead me to being blessed by God and connected to God. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of effort. See, that's the up religion. But if you look at all the world religions, that's what, they're, that's what they are. It's about doing. The down religion is that God came to us. He came down to us. Christ came to us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He's called the light from above. It's called the gospel. And so our religion is God coming down to us and freeing us, forgiving us, and raising us up. How important it is then as we understand uh, that as Jesus was dealing with trying to bring out the truth of God coming to them and what this meant and how to live in a compassionate way that he was really up against this very strict legalism. But you know, Christians can fall into that as well. True Christianity is the only up, uh, is the only down religion. It's the only one. Because we have received by faith alone and and through grace alone and Christ alone, that we're saved. can't do it. And that's the message that we have to share and we celebrate together. So rather than being a slave to the Sabbath, Jesus is saying be free to enjoy your relationship with God and others. Being restored, it's all about restoration, physically, spiritually. But it is part of that weekly rhythm, punctuated by big celebrations. For the, for the Jewish people, it was Passover. For us, it's Easter. You know, Christmas is important too, but not like Easter is, right? Uh, and we gather together for these sorts of things. And um, uh, very important. And when Jesus is interacting with them, and um, you know, they're, they're, um, uh, the, the, the disciples are doing what they're allowed to do according to Moses, is that if you went to the grain fields, um, uh, you could pick grain. Uh, you couldn't harvest it. You couldn't sell it, but you could eat it. Uh, we had one when I was uh, uh, in youth uh, group. We had this this uh, fundraiser for our youth group. I think it was really right about the edge of, end of kind of the edge of Walter League, going into into the into the next phase of our youth ministry in the Missouri Synod. And we went raspberry picking. Well, this was great. 
you could eat all the raspberries you wanted, okay? Well, there's only so many you can eat. It's like you go apple picking, okay? But we got something that everything we packaged was then, um, you know, went to our youth group, right? Of course, then if you wanted to buy them to take home, because my mom said, hey, we'll bring some raspberries, it, you, paid, you paid the market price for it, right? Okay? You know. But here, the disciples are eating grain. They're hungry. And the Pharisees are saying, ah, I caught you, I caught you. You're working. You're harvesting. It's like, no, no. And Moses said they could do that. That was, that was uh, especially for those in need or for the poor. It's like, you know, to give them that. Uh, uh, and, um, um, and then, this is great. I'll tell you, Jesus, he, well, he's God, but he always was right there with everything. And he says, by the way, let me tell you a Bible story about when David was running away from Saul and he and his men were hungry and they went to uh, the, high, uh, the, the priest, uh, Abiathar, and there was only that consecrated bread, you know, holy bread, only for the priest to eat, which was also one of Moses' law. But Abiathar gave it to him because life was more important than the rule, right? Relationship more important than the regulation. And what's Jesus saying here? By the way... If David did it, so can I. In fact, I'm better. I'm greater than David. It, it, there's just this, he's identifying with David. He's saying, you know, let's let's talk about who's great in our eyes, King David. You know, you, 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 and and then this pretty much silences them. Just silences. Them. What are they going to say to that? Um, and he pronounces again in our verse: the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So we want to really be disciplined about the rhythm of the day, work, play, rest, sleep, the rhythm of the week, which includes worship, you know, the rhythm then of seasons, which we are, have, church seasons as well as uh, seasons in our created world, and to live in an understanding that relationship, not regulation, is what's important. There's a, there's a, um, a Christian uh, teacher, Josh McDowell is his name, uh, and um, uh, I still, he had a lot of, or has a lot of great work for, for youth and for parents. And this is what he, one of the things he says. Rules without relationship leads to rebellion. Okay? Rules without relationship in a home lead to rebellion. Rules in any organization without relationship, such as to God or each other, leads to rebellion. And what's the problem? is we're always rebelling against God's law. So why are we fighting, remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy when God's saying, hey, I can't, I can't bless you better than when you honor this. Rest, restoration, relationship with me and with others. And for Jesus then to demonstrate this in a very, very um, uh, concrete way uh, as he focuses then on what does it mean? Love God, love neighbor, and to be best to do that by remembering our Sabbath rest, this gift of God. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen.